Ahoy there, mateys. Hello, friends. Greetings from the seven seas, and welcome aboard the VHS Pirate Ship. And welcome to Reek of the Week. If you're a fan of the channel, then you already know what this little show is all about. But if you're new to these neck of the woods, first of all, let me encourage you to hit subscribe. Second of all, Reek of the Week is a little show here on the VHS Pirate Ship where I take a break from talking about movies and VHS collecting, and I examine different aspects of 80s and 90s. 90s nostalgia. Yes, it's a retrospective look back on some of the things that made growing up in the 80s and 90s so fantastical. And things seemingly will never be that great again. And no, I don't think I'm just being sentimental. I think it's because everything really sucks nowadays. Yes, the future blows in the 80s and 90s sure were a good time. And it's always a fun time to look back and reminisce. So get your smelling nose on, people. It's time Time to stand downwind and get a whiff because it's the show that has the sweet stench of childhood memories and reeks of nostalgia. It's Reek of the Week! And today I'm going to finish the underrated toy line saga and hopefully by now you've seen the previous two underrated toy line saga episodes. Yes, we started off talking about underrated toy lines by discussing dino riders and then continued down our little merry trail by talking about stuff like the Karate Kid figures, Battle Beast, and Sectors! And these are toy lines that I feel do not get the recognition they deserve. I mean, they were innovative, stylish, detailed, and well, just all around pretty neat. And they were toy lines that were clearly overshadowed by the heavy hitters like the Transformers and G.I. Joe. And aside from the toy lines that I've already talked about, there are many more toy lines that fit in this very category, such as The, the Visionaries, Visionaries, Knights of the, of the Magical, Magical Light, Light, which was released by Hasbro in 1987 and was a very short-lived toy line that had an even shorter-lived cartoon show. Yes, it only had 13 episodes that ran from September to December of 1987, so this was quickly swept under the rug. This has a very involved story. It takes place on the planet of Prismos, where all technology suddenly ceases functioning, and the citizens have to rely on ancient magic to survive. The planet's three suns align, causing a radioactive emission that makes all the technology take a total shit. And somehow there's magic involved and there's two warring factions that use this magic to battle each other. Yes, the magic is hidden within them and this is where the gimmick comes in. The figures each had a holographic image on their chest and on their staffs that revealed what magical powers they had. And this was the major selling point of this toy line and oddly enough, it's also the reason it was quickly defunct. You see, holographic images are rather complex and therefore rather expensive to produce. The income to output ratio did not match up. Basically, Basically, they didn't make dick off these figures. It only had one series of figures, and there was a second series slated, but basically they said, fuck you. So let's say you're an action figure collector and want to start collecting these. How much do they go for nowadays? Surely a toy line that wasn't that successful can't be worth all that much. Holy shit. Yep. These are going for some pretty high prices nowadays. Couldn't find a single one under $100. So let's go from magical abilities to straight up karate action with Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos, which was released by Kenner in 1986. And like many other toy lines, this coincided with a cartoon series. But this cartoon series is not an actual cartoon series. You see, it's only a mini series. I suppose they never expected it to go very far. Far, so there's only five episodes. But those episodes do have the actual Chuck Norris doing voiceovers. And this was actually a fairly big deal. The toys themselves were rather detailed and had karate action. And also had stuff like a Corvette that shot ninja stars. What else could you really ask for? And there were even zipper clips of these. Huh. Zipper clips. Yeah, in the 80s. Zipper clips were a big deal. Now, if you're a fan of the show, then you know that I've talked about how funny it is that there are rated R properties that get turned into children's products. And many people besides me have talked about how it is strange that there are cartoons and toys for stuff like Robocop, Rambo, and 
Toxic Avenger. But I think we all sleep on the fact that Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos is another rated R property that got turned into a kid's product. Now this is not based on anything in particular. And by the way, think about this. Chuck Norris is so badass that this is not a character, it's simply just Chuck Norris. Yeah, Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos is not based on a character, it's simply based on Chuck Norris and the reputation that he's acquired through the work of his movies. His movies that in this point in time were all rated R. Rated R. Rated R. Rated R. Making Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos yet another R-rated property that got turned into a kid's product. Yes, they were good times because they absolutely would not do anything like that today. So what if you wanted to start collecting these? What are they going for nowadays? Well, they're not going for visionary prices, but they're still pretty steep. Hell, these zipper clips are going for 60 bucks. Oh, hey, look, they even had a kite. A karate Commando kite. So let's move on to another toy line that I feel is an unsung hero with the GoBots, which was released by Tonka in 1983. Now you might be asking yourself, why on earth does Captain Adam consider GoBots an underrated toy line? Everybody knows about the GoBots. What an asshole. Yes, it's true. The GoBots were rather popular and hardly something you can call underrated. And they stood toe to toe with arguably the biggest toy line of the 80s, the Transformers. And since the premise of the Transformers and the GoBots was pretty much the same, I mean, <laughs> transforming vehicles and all, well, it's really hard to say the GoBots were not a ripoff of Transformers. Because they totally were. Yes, but the price points were very different. The GoBots were a cheaper alternative to Transformers, leading them to be referred to as the poor man's Transformer. As you may know, the Transformers had two different size scales. There were the smaller ones that were relatively cheaper and might be the ones that you got if you were good when you went to Kmart with your mom. And then there were the larger ones that were more complex, partially die cast, way cooler, and also way more expensive. And these were the ones that if you were lucky enough, you might get on your birthday. But the GoBots had a smaller scale, a simplistic setup and a cheap price point that was very attractive to customers. Now, of course, later on down the road, the GoBots would initialize a deluxe line of figures that matched the scale of the mid-sized Transformers. And these were called Super, Super GoBots. Go -Bots. And not only were these the same scale as the mid-sized Transformers, but they were also partially die-cast, just like the Transformers. <laughs> They're not even really trying to hide the fact that they're ripping off Transformers at this point. And to further add to the Transformers ripoff factor, they also had several GoBots that would combine to form a giant GoBot, much like the Transformers Devastator or, you know, the other ones. And also, you know how the Transformers had the Insecticons? You know, the robots that transformed into insects? Well, the GoBots had them too. At this point, the GoBots were blatant ripoffs of the Transformers. But the characters' names weren't as cool as the Transformers were. Some of them were, like, look, Bug Bite. He's a Volkswagen Beetle. But, uh, Defendor. Oh. Oh, thank goodness, he's a friendly robot tank. Yes, they weren't all winners, but it didn't really matter because these were top sellers. And one of the things that separated the GoBots from the Transformers was that the GoBots had playsets and also had accessories like this thing, which didn't transform and really just kind of moved up and down and didn't, um, didn't really make any sense and it didn't make any sense in the cartoon either. Yes, of course, this had a cartoon show and it was called Challenge of the GoBots. It was produced by Hanna-Barbera and ran from 1984 to 1985 and had a grand total of 65 episodes. And like the Transformers cartoon show that you're so fond of, this show would live on in syndication for many years to come. And the GoBots actually had a full-length feature film released in theaters. Yes, Go GoBots Battle of the Rock Lords was released in theaters March 21st, 1986 and featured the voice acting of Roddy McDowell, Telly Savalas, and Margot Kidder. And I'm guessing this was before she went batshit crazy? So, I mean, this movie kind of was a big deal. And what are the Rock Lords, you might ask? Well, it's a subsidiary of GoBots, and this film was meant to launch that toy line. The Rock Lords were warriors that transformed into rocks. Huh. Well, you would think this would be pretty boring, but actually, 
these toys were pretty cool and pretty original and inventive because yes there were plenty of things that transformed into cars and shit but there wasn't anything that transformed into rocks and aside from all this there was also multiple books about the GoBots a comic book about the GoBots and GoBots even had their own magazine the GoBots was a worldwide phenomenon much like the Transformers, the GoBots got its start in Japan, and they were called Machine Robo. And this is where the Super GoBots series comes from. And in Europe, the GoBots was referred to as Robo Machine. So why exactly do I consider GoBots an underrated toy line? Well, it's because of all this shit. The Super GoBots, the Rock Lords, the movie, the books, the combiners, the comic books, the worldwide status. I mean, the GoBots were everywhere, and I think people sort of forget about that. It seems like everyone just remembers them for the cheap little figures that would be in Zares, but the GoBots were much more than just that. And for being a toy line that was referred to as the poor man's Transformers and an absolute Transformers ripoff, it certainly gave Transformers a run for their money. So much so that Hasbro, the company that produced Transformers, eventually bought out Tonka in 1991. And instead of simply dismantling and dissolving the GoBots property, they actually absorbed it into the Transformers storyline, making the GoBots part of a Transformers multiverse, alternate universe kind of thing. So that's pretty neat. Yes, after years of tough competition, Hasbro knew that the GoBots were a big deal and subsequently, nothing to fuck with. And would be one of the initial reasons Hasbro wanted to acquire the Tonka properties. Well, there you go. We've reached the end of the Reek of the Week underrated toy line saga. I hope we've all learned something today. Like, holographic images are really expensive. Chuck Norris is such a badass that he became his own toy line. And that the GoBots, despite being cheap, were simply nothing to fuck with. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to hit subscribe and share this shit. And take care out there. And I'll see you next time. Only on Captain Adam's VHS Pirate Ship.